deal. Okay. All right. Today, I have two very special guests joining me, Dave Anderson and Blake Fly. Sorry, Blake, I don't know how to pronounce your proper last name. Neither do I. <laughs> they are the co-founders of My Life Online, a movement speaking across the nation to schools about bullying prevention and how things that make us weird actually make us awesome. Most recently, since COVID-19 and being isolated at home, Dave and Blake have started an international movement called the Stuck at Home Society, bringing together kids from across the globe to hang with them for an hour twice a week, engaging them, connecting with them through conversations, and interacting in these really amazing, meaningful ways, creating this beautifully powerful space for these kids to be seen and heard. Welcome, Dave and Blake, to the Body Project Podcast. Thank wow, you so thank much, you, Catherine. Catherine. Wow, that was like what an intro that next was. Next level. Well, you know, like, did you write that intro? Did like, where, that I wrote that intro. We should, but the two we should of you take that write intro and actually intro. use it. There you go. Take it. <laughs> okay. So for the well, last two years, this podcast has, about, has been about fitness and how exercise and movement is a powerful access point for people to transform their lives. But in the midst of the pandemic, I shifted the conversation to meet the needs of my listeners so that they feel seen and that they have the tools to feel supported in the overwhelm, in the anxiety, and in the panic of this unprecedented time, right? Mm. Last week, I spoke about my personal challenges of running my business business, curating this podcast, and homeschooling my two kids. It has been the most challenging part of the quarantine for me, right? Yeah. And as you guys know, I have two kids, but one of them has been joining you guys online. And you two have been such a bright light during this uncertain time for my son, Peyton. He looks forward to seeing you every single session that he's online with you guys. And, you know... It is, it's, you guys have created a really special thing. So let's start with COVID. Uh, tell us about the inception of the Stuck at Home Society. Let's start with that. Sure. Beautiful, beautiful place to start. Dave, you? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, obviously, we've been serving young people in various capacities since 2011. That's when we first started our anti-bullying assembly program, the Acoustic Opera, and then My Life Online was kind of 2014. So we've been working with young people for a very long time in various capacities. Mm -hmm. And the moment COVID um, kind of started, this whole, you know, everyone's at home, stuck at home. We were talking about that idea one day, just how everyone's stuck at home. And we thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could gather young people from across the world and get them on Zoom? Uh, while they're stuck at home and just have meaningful conversations to support them mentally and emotionally for the most part while these kids were stuck at home because we knew that their life was about to change dramatically so we thought let's let's see if we can help some families help some parents and help some kids so the initial idea was <clears throat> why don't we create a workshop series and in fact we started with just um putting nine dates on the calendar we were going to do nine workshops on zoom a few times a week for free called the Stuck at Home series. And after I think it was the third session, we got on the phone after the third session, Blake and I, and we had this idea, we're like, what if we just did this every day? <laughs> and we decided to, which seemed like a really smart idea. It was a smart idea, but also maybe overextended ourselves a little bit in committing to that. So we did 20, we ended up doing 20 consecutive days. We did not take weekends. We did an hour with kids from around the world on Zoom every day for 20 days. But in the process, what I got the most out of it, and I'll, Blake can speak for himself, but it was just a real understanding of what families were going through of what kids were experiencing and for the first time in my life I felt like I was a teacher what I mean by that was you know I've never had a class you know we've worked with students in schools but we kind of go in we speak and then we're gone and we often don't see those students again mm -hmm. and you know, we now have this virtual class of kids that are from all over the world and these kids are interacting and they're creating new friendships, virtual friendships that they never would have met some of these people, of course, you know, if it weren't for our program. So that's kind of the, that's the inception of it as we started with a free series. Then we took about a week off to, to find out from parents 
what was the most valuable, what was the most helpful, what people would want. And then we took those ideas and then we created the Stuck at Home Society, as you already described beautifully, Catherine, twice a week, a one hour workshop with kids from across the globe. And it's been awesome. Yeah, it is pretty awesome and it's pretty special. And I remember, I think it was the second week that you guys were doing the free series that Peyton, you know, he came after your hour and he sat down beside me and you guys know Peyton pretty well right now, by now. And he grabbed my hand and he looked at me and he goes, mom, you know, I just want to say thank you for everything you do for me. And it stopped me in my tracks, right? Mm -hmm. And I knew exactly where it was coming from, from the two of you. And I know that I had the privilege this year attending Blake's thank you event that he's hosted now four times now, Blake. Yeah. Right? And I know that you and your wife, Emily, initially created it to show appreciation between friends because we are so busy in life. Yeah. And to really bring us back to how to appreciate each other. And, you know, it reminded me of that and how you're bringing those conversations that we struggle with as adults to our kids. So mm. I would love for you, Blake, to share that appreciation and how you guys are weaving that into the conversation with the kids. Well, thanks for coming to the event and for making those connections. Cause yeah, it's neat to, to see the threads that do mm -hmm. connect through different generations. I mean, Dave and I keep saying before these sessions, it's what are, what do kids need right now? And we actually don't have the answer, mm -hmm. but we're committed to ask the question consistently. And one of the sessions, we just said, what, what do kids need right now? And we just thought, well, they're probably getting at their siblings' throats right now. Their parents are probably saying, I love you, and I'd really love to sell you right now for maybe like three days. And so because we know that the walls are coming in for families, even if families are all sweet, loving, happy, and wonderful, it's like, well, what's a way to have the walls <laughs> go back out a little bit <laughs> and give more breathing room in the household? Mm. So we thought, okay, we know that if a parent gets, you know, a little sweet like note or gesture or something thoughtful from their child, it's it's like it's the kryptonite for parents. It's like, I, oh, how can I be mad at you? Like you just made me a construction paper tie. I, <laughs> how can I be mad at you? Yeah. So we weren't doing this to be like, do this and your parents will leave you alone. Rather, we were doing it from a place of this is guaranteed to create two minutes of presence, which right now may feel like two days yes. of presence. And Obviously, because we work a lot with kids, we, we spun it in a way of like, hey, anyone here ever get a little bit, a little bit tired of their, you know, their mom, their dad breathing down their neck? Like, yeah, my, my parents are always on my case. Okay, well, here's, here's an idea. So we, we make it kid-oriented. Mm -hmm. So they're like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do this. I can, I can write a card. But we do it knowing that then the interaction, it will be really pure and sweet and endearing and memorable. And sometimes in the work that I do with adults, I forget how people need a lot of coaching on how to write a card. Yes. Or like how to say a grateful sentence mm. to their most important relationships. Take a, take a father son, for example, you know, sometimes it takes them 80 years for a father to say, I love you to a son. And that's a generalization, but we wanted to give kids a very simple template to say thank you to the adults in their lives. So that's, I guess, what you experienced, Catherine. Yeah, it was quite, quite beautiful. And I know, I think it was, you know, close to the end of your free series, you actually invited parents to join the kids online with you guys, which was really cool. Yeah. And, you know, more than anything, you know, Peyton was like typing away on the computer because on Zoom, you can do these chats. And he was like, typing away to his little friends, chit-chatting, and it was really sweet. But more than that, it was evident that in this new age of online communication, and that in the midst of this social isolation, that friendships and connections were being made with kids, right? Yeah. And it actually blew my mind, because adults, right? Like, we are used to doing this thing on Zoom and, you know, fostering kind of this kind of dance, but to watch kids do it, it was quite 
amazing actually. Um, and I couldn't help to wonder if this is the foundation that we're giving our kids to catapult from, who they will become, right? Because I see the two of you who have been friends for a long time and have built this amazing education company uh, from being friends for a long while. So I would love for you guys to share your story a little bit of like your friendship and then how you've built My Life Online as your education platform. Wow. Well, that's going to, that's going to take us back a decade. Remember, uh, Dave, this and, has to be actionable. We got to, we got to, I know, ourselves my in goodness, on this one. my goodness, that's going to be okay. Well, <laughs> you know, Blake and I, we, we knew each other back in university going back to 2005. Uh, we are both, we come from a residence life background, residence advisors, residence dons. Blake was a residence manager for a few years at Western at University mm. of Western Ontario in London. And Although we weren't uh, close friends at university, we connected shortly after university uh, because we had both recently left our traditional jobs. We had both newly become self-employed, you know, decided to do the entrepreneur thing. We didn't even know what that meant at the time. And we got together for lunch one day. We started spending time together, realized we had more in common than we could have ever imagined. And our work together just started with one idea. And that was, hey, what if we made a program that was entertaining, inspiring, and educational for young people. Because at one point in time, for both of us, we wanted to be teachers. You know, both my parents are educators. Uh, my wife, Jenny, is a teacher. Blake's mother was a teacher for 35, 40 years in the classroom. And so th that was kind of a natural um, concept for us to be a teacher in the classroom. And both of us decided not to go to teacher's college. So then and both when we of our got moms, together, oddly were choir ladies, like both, yeah, our both parents music, were choir leaders. So funny. So, yeah. so that was, you know, an interesting thread commonality. Hmm. We put our heads together and created this anti-bullying assembly program. And it started very with a it was sort of it's just a small idea. Hey, let's just go try this out for an audience of kids. But then we got invited back and then we got referred out to other schools, and that became a huge part of our work. That first um, assembly program, the acoustic opera, we ended up delivering that program almost 600 times. Wow. B 600 individual performances between the years 2011 and 2015 was I believe our last time we performed that. And then we created you know, My Life Online. Where did that come from? Well, that came from educators asking us repeatedly, do you have anything that addresses cyberbullying? Because Around 2012, 2013, 2014, more and more elementary school students were starting to go online, social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, now TikTok. And so we said, well, we can make something. So we wrote this My Life Online workshop. Now that's been delivered over 600 times across the US and Canada. So to, sit, to, to kind of share like what, was, what were our steps or what was our strategy and how did we do that, we don't even know. Um, everything that we've created has been centered around Great creativity, <laughs> playfulness. So in terms of the actionable stuff, I don't know, make a great friend and trust your instincts because we have basically done that for a decade. And when we get new ideas, we just try and we just test it. And the Stuck at Home Society and Stuck at Home series is no different. It was just an idea that happened one day. Like, hey, let's just try this. Let's do some workshops on Zoom for kids. Next thing you know, Stuck at home society. Yeah. So actually that's the perfect answer, Dave, because what I want people to get from this is that the connections, you know, oftentimes as a parent, you think, oh my God, they gotta do the academics, they gotta do the academics, right? And watching the way that Peyton was interacting and everybody, all these kids were like chatting and interacting, right? And when you take everyone's mics off, everyone's like chatting and saying things is exactly that, right? That people, these kids, even though it's unconventional and maybe uncomfortable for some parents, it is fostering the connections, fostering those conversations that lets our kids think outside the box, right? Which you guys clearly have done and have demonstrated so well, well with the business that you've created. And that's exactly what I want people to hear today about how this unconventional time offers for unconventional growth that is, quantum leaks beyond what we think is possible, right? And on that note, will you share with us, to the parents that are listening, 
what they need to be aware of if they are in that <clears throat> age group that their kids are starting to dabble online and how can they be safe and responsible like you guys are teaching educators and parents to be? We love giving people very, very simple language mm. and the same language for every age group because we find that in our space, sometimes when people go into schools and speak to students or they do virtual experiences for families, they kind of have the, the parent speak and then they have the, the kids speak. And it's sort of like, we got to sound super smart for the parents and we got to sound like super attentive for the kids. And Dave and I, we, we goof off more with kids, mm. but we, we, we look at it like this. Think of these two people. There's, there's Mr. Rogers and there's the Wiggles. <laughs> now, both worlds are amazing ways that kids have like learned and been engaged, entertained, but we keep joking. Dave and I say that Mr. Rogers and the Wiggles do similar work, but in a different way. Cause the Wiggles on TV, they are one way in the grocery store. They're completely different people. Mm. Mr. Rogers, if he were still alive today, the way he was on TV is the exact same as the way he would have been at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. So Dave and I are committed to make sure that if a kid sees us in the grocery store, we're the same as we were in their school, as we were online. And if their parents are there, like we're consistent everywhere. So we need language for the parents and the kids and the teachers. So we use these words, things like project and protect. So what does that mean? Well, if you have a child right now at home on a screen more than ever, what do they want to project online? What do they want to say to the world? Their hobbies, their skills, their talents, their interests, and have a conversation with your kids about what they want to project. Mm -hmm. what they want to tell the world. Right. And then it sets them up nicely for a little alley-oop into, okay, Peyton, okay, Maxine, okay, Bryson, now what do you want to protect mm. so that you don't screw that stuff up? If you want to be a professional athlete someday and you want to project that you can shoot sweet hoops, well, then let's protect those comments or those ways of treating people that may lead to them getting hurt or you getting hurt or your opportunities getting harmed. So project and protect is an example. Another example is what's hurtful and what's helpful. These words can be used in companies and these words can be used between kids. Yet sometimes we overcomplicate the heck out of this internet security, passwords, privacy. It's like, no, just what are ways you can open up a dialogue with your child, not to snoop on what they're up to on their screen, but to say, we're all learning this screen thing and social media thing. So what do we want to be mindful of that betters people? And what do we want to make sure we don't do that worsens people and ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. I love those value pillars. I think that's excellent. And I know, Dave, that you're an amazing business coach and you support your clients from pivoting their offline skills to online business. And you speak about exactly this, about champion championing authenticity in people right kind of like you said who you are in the grocery stores who you are with the kids who you are with the parents and educators right and you i know dave you believe that authenticity builds a powerful business and i know that you also have these deep conversations with kids about how can they share in a vulnerable way that is authentic to who they are about them missing their friends. I just heard it by chance the other day when you guys were on them missing their friends or what are they missing and what does that look like? And, you know, I was just grabbing something in and out and these kids were sharing about the struggle, about how they miss, they used to always do play dates together and they miss seeing their friends. So Dave, talk to us about that authenticity piece and about how it's so important to get our kids to share vulnerably and authentically with each other. Yeah, thanks for thanks for sharing all that and for pointing that out because that's something that Blake and I really wanted to bring to the stuck at home society mm -hmm. and the series when we were working with the kids before is just that we often find that kids are capable of expressing their ideas and their feelings in a much deeper and more powerful way than oftentimes we in society give them credit for mm -hmm. and what they're often missing is just the space to do that um 
so they're just they're just missing the forum and sometimes you know no matter what parents do in the home because of the nature of the family dynamic kids are kids are going to be reserved in some of the things that they express to their mom to their dad to their siblings because it just feels weird mm -hmm. um and every family is different of course it's going to be easier in some families than others and there are so many variables at play but what we wanted to do is kind of create this separate space where all the kids in that space feel comfortable and confident just voicing what they're feeling and in the session that you were overhearing that was our only intention was how can we how can we give these kids today a place to share what they're actually feeling right now with everything that's going on because sometimes just speaking out loud what you're going through is all it takes to kind of dissolve some of those negative feelings that they might be moving through right so if but if they just keep that inside and it's kind of all up in their head but they're not really telling their parents not really telling their siblings you know they might just be playing video games for a lot of the day or whatever you know everyone's every family's different right now or working on school stuff you know i think actually the school work right now is this is my perspective so take this with a grain of salt but i believe that all academic work in this moment needs to be at the very 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 bottom of the list of priorities like it is so far at the bottom to me that it's like it doesn't even matter because there are going to be um there are gifts i think for kids that are present in this experience of covid and what's going on that we can absolutely miss these opportunities for growth for connection if we don't take a minute to say wait a minute this is unique this is a unique time in history hmm. and if we stay focused on math and and making sure they get their math homework done we're i mean parents are going to miss out on an amazing opportunity truly to give their kids the chance to be bored the chance to figure out what to do with their time we learned yesterday on our zoom you're going to hear my kids upstairs all crazy right now a little bit but we learned that there are kids that are part of our society right now that are exploring new interests new passions that they generally don't have time to explore because they're too busy. They're, they're over programmed as it is with their extracurriculars, their academics, their family obligations. And so now that with this COVID thing, my gosh, in some ways, it's really hard, extremely hard. You've got a four year old and an 18 month old. It's really hard. In other ways, it's the biggest gift they could ever have that your family could ever have. And it, my, my recommendation is to put the schoolwork at the bottom of the list and to make connection and self you know exploration and giving your kids the space to just like Peyton did make a volcano share with a group of kids online that is the gold that is present right now but if we're not careful we can miss that because we're so wrapped up in making sure they quote unquote keep up with their academics or whatever that means they got the rest of their life to keep up with their academics um, yes. that's my perspective but you know, I, I hope everyone takes that with a grain of salt. That's just my opinion, but yeah, thought I'd no, share. thank you, Dave. I think, I think that's part of it. What we all need to hear because there is a lot of anxiety around the homeschooling piece that there is something to keep up with, or that we should be doing certain things. Um, so I think that is extremely powerful. So, what would you say to those parents that just feel stuck and don't actually know where to start these conversations? Because, you know, a lot of people listening are that work full time or are still working full time don't know how to get into these authentic conversations i mean blake you know at your thank you events how uncomfortable those conversations are about saying thank you to someone that you actually appreciate right so what would what's the one golden nugget parents can take away from this conversation to have that glimmer of hope if they are struggling during this uncertain time that they can feel maybe this much more connected with their kids what would you say to them the word that strikes me as you ask that, Catherine, is imagination. Okay, two words, imagination and experience. Now, again, this isn't like, come on, parents, just use your imagination and have some experiences. We understand that people are so tapped out right now, except even in the work that Dave and I do. We had a conversation yesterday before our society session, which was, how can we ask kids these questions, but make it like an experience? So we decided, okay, we're going to call these kids uh, a board of advisors today. And we want to have like a meeting with the board of advisors. 
because they're the experts. And so when we'd ask them a question, we'd put on this like music. It was like this kind of epic background music and you'd see the kids just kind of sit up a little taller. And so we wanted to interview them like experts, which was code for, we just want to have a conversation, but it not be boring for kids. Mm -hmm. And maybe to some it was amazing. Maybe to some they were kind of bored because it was like an hour of just discussion. But to the parents, I would say, what is a way to just add like a dose of imagination and a dose of experience so that a conversation around screen time or what are you up to online instead of, hey, what are you up to on your screen? It's more like, all right, it is 2020 and the world just, you know, kind of went inside out. I'm no longer nine years old. I wonder what it's like to be a nine-year-old. So these two kitchen chairs over here, we've set them up. We've put up a little piece of paper. It says the nine-year-old news. I'm going to put a little song on right now that is like a theme from a news channel. We're going to film you. Let's do this. Nine-year-old news. We're going to ask you five key questions. You know what? Here's two mugs. This is your mug. This is your mug. We're actually going to put a little bit of gel in your hair. Okay. Like pump up the expertise of the child. And then just ask them the stuff that you were hoping to ask them anyway. Right. <laughs> like I even saw a Facebook video recently where parents made the kitchen table into a, like a fine dining restaurant where they sent their kids outside for a minute and their kids came back in and they like gave them a menu. They brought them to the table. They wrote down their order, but all they're doing is bringing their kid to the table, going to the fridge and getting a snack but those kids are going to remember it for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So how can you add like 5% of an experience and some imagination to just like pump up the moment to then do the stuff you were going to do anyways. And for couples who are listening right now, think of it even in, in a relationship with your couple. Sometimes there's conversations you want to have. They might not be the easiest thing to bring up. Mm -hmm. So you kind of like stack the deck in your favor of like, we'll go for a walk first, or you know what, we'll just uh, take a trip to Hawaii before we have that. Co- like it's all <laughs> it's all nonsense, yeah. but we could do the same thing to ask basic questions to kids. I yeah. think. Yeah, I absolutely love that. So when you guys start the stuck at home society for parents, <laughs> then you let us know. But in the meanwhile, I know that one of the brightest days in Peyton's life right now is hanging out with the two of you. So I will post all the details for everyone listening so that they can join as soon as possible, right? Onto the Stuck at Home Society with the two of you twice a week, an hour a day. It is an incredible place, space that you've created. So I thank you for that. And I thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much. Oh, it's been phenomenal. Thank My you, pleasure. Catherine. That was fun.